Uh, good evening, everyone, again. We will be uh, reading from a very famous passage of scripture this evening. So our lesson for tonight will be about prosperity. So do you really want to prosper? Uh, excuse me. Okay. So the verses we'll be reading is very familiar to all of us, I would guess. It's in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. I'll read it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And here's God's promise. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and read together with me. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Uh, our message tonight is not like these people here. If you know these people, the one to your upper left is Kenneth Copeland, a very famous televangelist in the United States. And the other one is Joel Austin. If you know them, Kenneth Copeland, these people are what I would consider as prosperity preachers. Kenneth Copeland here is, I think, one of the richest televangelists in the United States. And Joel Austin also has a very large church. But, you know, uh, they, they always teach and preach about, you know, especially Kenneth Copeland, he would always teach that, uh, you know, you have to give to, the, to, to my ministry so that, that God will in turn bless you. And uh, Joel Austin was once interviewed and, uh, and he was asked, why don't you preach about sin? And his answer was, you know, I just want to stay on my lane. And with that, what he meant was, you, you know, he just wants to encourage people, to uplift people, telling them that, you know, God will always uh, be with you to provide with you, to provide you with your needs. You know, uh, those uh, feel good messages only. But as independent fundamental Baptist believers, we are told by Christ to teach and preach the whole counsel of God. So, yes, they're right that our God can prosper us and he wants to prosper us. But we will go a little deeper than uh, what these guys are teaching and preaching. Uh, so we will uh, concentrate on the, on the third verse. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever means whatsoever, not just finances. So before we, we, we go on, let's have a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity that you have given me to preach to your dear people. We know, Lord, the faithfulness of Berean Baptist Church with the leadership of their, of their pastor. We, I thank you, Lord, for the friendship I have with Pastor Narvaez for all these years. May you continue to give him wisdom to lead the church uh, in Doha. May you also bless the members, Lord, uh, in the church, give them wisdom and uh, uh, the determination to still continue your work, even in the midst of uh, this pandemic and help us, Lord, also here. As we uh, deal with this uh, pandemic, may you help us, Lord, to continue to uh, be faithful to you. And please bless the preaching of your word this evening. May you help, may your Holy Spirit guide us and help us, Lord. All these things we pray in Christ's name, amen. Now, we, I want to talk to you about God's condition for prosperity. Uh, there are five conditions here 
uh, three in verse one and two in verse two. So, but we will only deal with verse one. Uh, what not to do? Now, the verse says here, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seateth in the seat of the scornful. So three things here. First is, God says, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, most of us, when, when there's something wicked, very wicked that's being done, we say, oh, it's so wicked, it's so vile. And we, when we run out of words, we just say, oh, it's so ungodly. But the word ungodly just means un, which means not. Godly means God's way. So when we say ungodly, it means not God's way. And the word counsel means uh, a counsel is uh, our ideas or principles that you allow to influence you. For example, very common, when we, when we don't know what to do, we seek the counsel of our parents or the counsel of our pastor with regards to ministry matters and some experts in the field. That's why an attorney is sometimes called a legal counsel. So if you, I know you, you remember the story of, of uh, Ammon, Amnon and his friend Jonadab in the Old Testament. Jonadab gave counsel to his friend Amnon and Amnon listened to him. If you remember the story, Amnon was in love with his uh, half-sister, Tamar, and uh, he was sad. And so Jonadab gave him a, a counsel. He told him, no, you know, you, you play sick. And then you ask your father, David, to uh, uh, for, uh, ask your father, David, for Tamar, your sister, to take care of you. And then do to her whatever is good in thy sight. So in other words, uh, he, when that happened, he, he raped his sister. And two years later, he was killed by Absalom. And another thing was, is uh, the famous Queen Tudor, uh, Mary Tudor of England, a queen of England during the 1500s. She also listened to the advice of two bishops, uh, Bishop Bonner and Bishop Gardiner. Uh, it was during this time in, 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 Engli in the history of England where there's uh, reformation, Protestant reformation. So uh, these two bishops advised her, you know, uh, these Protestants are growing in number and they will be a threat to your throne. So uh, they advised her to arrest those uh, Christians who are a threat to her throne and a threat also to the Roman Catholic Church. So you know what? History would, would tell us that during her reign, he burned Christians at the stake. There are over, almost 300 Christians that were burned at the stake. 284, I, I saw the list. And these are not only clergymen or preachers, but even ordinary Christians. So it's not just talking, asking advice from one or more people. Uh, so it's also uh, what you allow, uh, things that you would allow your eyes to see and your ears to hear that would qualify as a counsel. So majority of the things that you allow to enter your mind is through your ears and through your eyes. If they are godly, then continue listening to them and looking at them. But Psalm chapter one, verse one warns us that if they are ungodly, don't let them in. You have the option of not allowing ideas into your mind through your ears and through your eyes. So, what do you allow your eyes to see? And what do you allow your ears to hear?
there are a lot of things that goes into our mind. Okay. Uh, can it be gossip or uh, get rich quick schemes, investment portfolios? You know, here in the Philippines, there are many scams here. Usually they, they prey on, on overseas Filipino workers. So they, 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 you know, they would uh, encourage them to, to invest in this thing and that thing, and it will earn you money fast. So beware of those things. How about false teachers? There are, there are many of this, especially nowadays when we have the internet, there are many false teachers and preachers uh, in the internet who's preaching, uh, who are preaching false gospels. They add works to faith for salvation. Social media also, be careful. And also be careful of these uh, self-help books or some secular psychology that's creeping into our churches. So, I'm sorry. Uh, the, I know there are many families here in, 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 in Berean Baptist Church. Uh, we, you raise your children. I raise my children too for the glory of the Lord. Uh, sometimes it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to raise our children for the Lord. So there are, there are uh, sometimes there are teachers who's teaching about uh, how to raise our children. And they, they promote that, you know, uh, spanking is not good for your children. So we know that the Bible commands parents to spank their children. So we should be wary of this and be careful of these people. So we should always use scripture as our basis in all our decisions, just like what Jesus did when he, when he had temptation, he used scriptures. So how we raise our children, how, how, we, how we deal with people uh, in our job, we should always base it on scriptures, like what our Lord did. So is what I'm allowing to influence me God's way? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Sometimes, no, we, we allow. We know that it's not God's way, but we allow it. Sometimes it feels good. It, it will benefit us, or maybe for the short term. But how about the benefit for eternity? And also ask this question to yourself. Is it really worth trading what you allow your eyes to see and your ears to hear? With whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, as promised by God. In Joshua 1.8, it, uh, it reads, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. Not just success, but good success. This is in line with, with, the, with the Psalm chapter 1. You know, if you do what God says, these are God's conditions. If you're able to do it, God will promise prosperity. So uh, we ought to guard ourselves, guard our hearts with this uh, ungodly counsel. Don't give it a chance. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the saying, give the devil an inch and he'll, he will drag you a mile. Number two, the Bible says, do not stand in the way of sinners. It simply means, you know, do not mingle with evildoers. Because their ways are very contagious, you know. Uh, you see the progression here? First point is, we, we, see, we look and we listen to ungodly advice or ungodly counsel. And then when you have listened long enough, then you think the way the ungodly people think. And then by and by, uh, your, uh, their standards will become your standards too. So we should be careful with ungodly counsel. 
The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24, it says here, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Friendship means to associate with, to, a, to be a companion. Verse 25 means uh, says, Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. So the Bible is always admonishing us to be careful with, we, with who we associate with. You remember the story of Lot, Abram and Lot. They parted ways because their, their, uh, their uh, men are fighting over the, where they would feed their, their animals. So what happened was in Genesis chapter 12, uh, 13, verse 12, it says here, Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. When I read this before, I, I, I'm just imagining, you know, uh, Lot putting up his tent, and his tent is facing Sodom, or in the direction of Sodom. But the word toward here, the, the Hebrew word used here, means as far as, up to, until Sodom. So that means it reached Sodom. Maybe it's just in the outskirts of Sodom, but uh, we know the story that eventually he lived in Sodom. Verse 13 says, The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. This is the problem sometimes with us Christians. We want to stay on the edge. We don't really want to go where, 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 where sin is, but we want to live in the edge. But, you know, we should be careful not to live on the edge. Because, you know, the evildoers, sinners, would suck us in. And you know what happened? The judgment of God in Sodom and Gomorrah. And another example is uh, the prodigal son. Uh, he wasted his substance with riotous living, the Bible says. Riotous means extravagant, reckless waste of substance, and high energies on unbridled sensuality. So the Bible says here in uh, Proverbs 13, verse uh, 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Uh, I want to tell you a story of a cousin of mine. Um, he was saved in our church, in Ilo, Ilo Baptist Church. He was baptized there. And uh, in fact, he brought some of his friends to church. But after some time, uh, he, he, he stopped going to church. And then I learned that when he, he enrolled in a, in a university, uh, this cousin of mine is smart. So some students in the university, you know, uh, saw that this guy is quite smart. So they tried to influence him. And by the way, he was influenced to join the uh, communist leaning organization in, in school uh, called the League of Filipino Students. And after school, he still uh, continued to, to involve himself with some uh, labor organizations, and you know, they 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 they, they rally, they 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 conduct protests on the streets. They're shouting against you know uh, corrupt uh, government officials and uh, businessmen who who oppress their laborers. All those things. So, uh, to make the long story short, after some time, what happened was he he also. Uh, was able to put up his own business. He became a businessman and he ran for a public office in their town. And uh, when, when we saw each other, this, this is exactly what he said. It's really difficult to serve as a government official without stealing from the government. That's his exact words. And now you see, he became the person that he once hated. He hated corrupt government officials. He hated the businessmen because they, they, they call them capitalists. And now he's a capitalist himself. And not only that, 
he uh, he left his wife and children for another woman. And I, I think his life is miserable right now. I hope he's happy. But, you know, God always says that there will be consequences. When you uh, disobey God, there will always be consequences. Now, uh, so he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So you might say, Brother Dennis, uh, this doesn't apply to me because you see, I, I'm, I'm always with Christians. But let's also ask ourselves, what kind, what kind of Christians are we spending our time with? What's their attitude towards the ministry, the church, the pastor, and other Christians? Because you see, there are also Christians that can who are you know critical of their pastor, Christians who are critical of you know uh, how the ministry is being run. So let's be careful also with uh, we we call Christian uh, believers among us, no. And the sad thing is, you know, uh, it says here, don't hang around with the hang around the wrong crowd. The sad thing is we might be the wrong crowd for them. So what kind of influence are you to your fellow Christians? And the Bible says here also in Proverbs 24, 1 and 2, be not thou envious against evil men. And not only that, the Bible says, neither desire to be with them. Don't even dream to be with them or desire to be with them. For their hearts studieth instruction and their lips talk of mischief. Don't you ever forget that we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. You and I represent Christ. But don't get me wrong. We should be a friend to unbelievers, just like Christ was a friend to publicans and sinners, the Bible says. But uh, his purpose, that, but our, uh, his purpose should be our purpose too. And that is to teach these people how they can have eternal life and grow in the Lord and be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Be careful who uh, will be, uh, who you influence. Now, the third point is, do not sit in the seat of the scornful. To scorn means disdain, derision, extreme contempt, scoff at, despise, consider something or someone worthless, a, conscious, a consciousness or belief of one's own superiority or worth. That's how you, dis, uh, that's the meaning of scorn. So actually scorning is a hard problem. Actually, if you dig deeper, it's pride. And it just comes out complaining. Complaining happens when what someone has done did not satisfy you. What someone did did not match your expectation. And you know what complaining is? The Bible calls it murmuring. Uh, murmuring or complaining. Uh, I know I saw some families there a while ago. You, you have uh, children, you're raising your children. You know, uh, nowadays in, in our day and age, it's so difficult to raise children. I, I think most parents would agree. Uh, they, they seem to have this entitlement mentality that they are entitled to all the things they want. And, you know, uh, they, they, they often complain we, because we live in an a day and age where complaining is just very easy for, for everybody. In the office, if you have a job, are you the kind of Christians who are complaining to your boss, complaining of the situation in the office? Are you the kind of wife also who is com constantly complaining to your husband or husband constantly complaining? In another verse, the Bible says, uh, in Philippians chapter 2, I mean, verse 14, it says, Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, 
in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You see, we are lights in this world. We have to let it shine. In, in another verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 10 the, uh, chapter 10, verse 10, it says, neither murmur ye. And don't you ever think for a second, brothers and sisters, that complaining is just a small thing with God. You remember the story in Numbers chapter 16 where Korah and company, Dathan and Abiram, you know, the children of Israel were sw swallowed by the ground for complaining. The ground opened up, swallowed them, and the ground closed. And uh, God did that because of complaining. 250 people died that day. And the Bible says there are 200 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. These are not ordinary people. The Bible says they're princes of the assembly. They have somehow some, uh, some position. Bible says famous in the congregation and men of renown. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me for a while. So, these are not ordinary people. This has, these people have some position. Uh, uh, many, time, many times, we, have the, we, we think that we have earned the right to complain because you know, we think we're somebody. We think we have also the position. And we are famous. Many people know us. We have this, this certain reputation. So we think we can, we have the right to complain. So it's not a small thing we got. Imagine uh, after killing 250 princes, the following day, God killed again. 14,700 of the children of Israel. So complaining is not a simple thing with God. I wonder if God would kill Christians today for complaining. How many of us will be attending church online next week? If God would kill Christians today for complaining, Pastors would be busy doing funeral services. Only if there are enough pastors alive to do them. So in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And if you recall Proverbs chapter 6, of the six things that the Lord hate, pride is number one in the list. Uh, you remember the story of David? David uh, told one of his uh, captains, Joab, to number the children of Israel. In, that's in 2 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, and after Job numbered all the children of Israel, uh, Israel has 800,000 valiant men that drew sword. And Judah has 500,000 men. That's more than a million soldiers. But why did David do that? Because of pride. You know, in the, during that time, if you have a, a, a huge army that represents power, Unlike in our time today, uh, the number of soldiers doesn't matter really much in, in, in modern uh, warfare because, you know, it depends on how many missiles you have. It's in the sophisticated uh, uh, 
uh, warfare equipment that you have. But during, but during their time, when you have so much army, you are very powerful. So when David sinned against God for uh, numbering the people, because you, you see, uh, God sees the heart. God sees our hearts. So because of that, God killed 70,000 of the children of Israel because of pride in David's heart. So what does it take for pride to get into your heart, into my heart? For David, it's the number of his army. For some of us, maybe it's the numbers in our bank account. Aren't you amazed how easy it is sometimes for us to be scornful at people who have less than us? But we can't do that for people, to, to people who has more than us. How many times have you scorned a, a lowly waiter, security guard, carpenter, a laborer, a janitor? So for David, it's the number of his men. For some of us, maybe it's the number of your degrees. And I'm talking of your educational attainment. Some of us, it's our talents or our accomplishments. So let's be careful and guard our hearts with these things. Uh, you may say, Brother Dennis, uh, please go on with your next point. I'm, I'm very good at this. There's no problem with me with regards to pride. If you're like that, I want you to pray for me. Because many times, I catch myself having this pride in my heart. Uh, around four weeks ago, a patient came to our clinic. Uh, he told me the history of what happened to his uh, uh, tooth. He, has a, 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 he, he had a third molar surgery done by a, another dentist. And he, he, he told me that uh, it wasn't finished, that the tooth wasn't taken out. The dentist worked for six hours and then the tooth is still there. The dentist could not somehow take it out. So he came to us, we scheduled an appointment with him and did the surgery on him. Uh, before the surgery, days before the surgery, I was really praying so hard, Lord, you've got to help me in this. If it took the other dentist six hours, this must be a very difficult case. I saw the x-rays. It was quite difficult. The position of the third molar is quite difficult to take out. So I was praying so hard for the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom and the necessary skills to take it out. So I was praying so hard. And then the time came, we did the surgery on him. And uh, it was quite difficult, but eventually we were able to remove it, take it out. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord, for helping us take this out. And then, and then I, I happened to look at the watch and then, oh, it took us less than an hour. So I, I said, thank you, Lord, for helping us take the tooth for less than one hour. So do you see anything, anything wrong with that? But I'll tell you what happened inside here. What, what went into my mind was, oh, it took the other dentist six hours. I just did it in less than an hour. You know, and then my mind kept on lingering on those thoughts and ideas until the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, so you really believe you did it? You really believe it's your ability that did it? Oh, then I, I, I just have to confess my pride to God. How about you? What does it take for you for pride to get into your mind and into your heart? For David, it's the number of people. Well, you know, uh, just give Dr. Dennis a little success and then Dr. Dennis will sin. 
how about you what does it take for you for pride to get into your heart james 4 6 and 7 says but he giveth more grace wherefore he saith god resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble submit therefore so yourselves therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you when you have pride you know god is against you god resisted the proud for uh for from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornications all those things uh all these evil things come from within and defile a man and Pride is in the list. Pride is in the list. So are you the kind of Christian who takes pleasure in putting other people down so you will look good? Are you that kind of Christian? So now, do you want whatsoever? Do you really want to prosper? Do you want whatsoever he doeth? shall prosper three things that god tells us to avoid do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly don't forget that image before don't forget that image if it's ungodly shut your eyes shut your eyes and shut your ears do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly do not stand in the way of sinners and Guard your heart against pride and complaining. It's not a small thing with God. Let's bow down our heads for prayer. And then after the prayer, I'll turn you over to Pastor Narvaez. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, tonight for this opportunity for your word to be uh, preached and shared to your people at Berean Baptist Church. We pray, Lord, that you help us uh guard our hearts against pride against ungodly counsel and against evil doers so that we can have your blessings we can have your promise of prosperity not just in our finances but in every of our area of our life including our families our jobs our businesses because you promise us oh lord that whatsoever we do shall prosper We pray now, uh, oh God, that you bless each and every one of us. May your word help us to grow a little bit more for your honor and your glory. All these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to ask everyone, I'd like to ask everyone to please bow your head and close your eyes. Folks, we just heard a very powerful teaching and preaching of the word of God. I believe as you were listening, the Holy Spirit was really moving. I can just feel the Holy Spirit moving in our midst, in my life. The Lord spoke to me through that message. One of the best messages actually that we have heard these last two months We are reminded of this truth that God wants to bless us, but there are certain conditions that we must uh, meet before we experience the blessing of prosperity. Not the kind of prosperity that the prosperity uh, gospel preaches, but prosperity that comes as a result of an intimate relationship with the Lord. Ayaw ko na pong parhabain ito because I know that the Holy Spirit has already spoken to you. Let me just ask you this. Did the Holy Spirit speak to your heart tonight? Are you walking in the counsel of the ungodly? The things we hear, the things we see, are you standing in the way of sinners? Sino yung mga kinakasama natin? You know what the Bible says? Evil communication corrupt good manners. Kung sasama ka sa mga kahit mga Kristiyano pa yan, kung hindi maayos ang kanilang buhay, sisirain din nila ang buhay. And do not sit in the seat of the scornful. 
Are you a complainer? Do we complain about things? What about the sin of pride? I will be the first one to raise my hand. I wonder who among you will raise your hand tonight along with mine and say, Pastor, that message is for me. Will you just raise your hand as I look at the pages of the computer here? If God spoke to your heart, kindly signify by just raising your hand. That's a wonderful response. That's a wonderful response. You know, as I am listening, that's not Dr. Andigan preaching. It's not Dr. Andigan teaching. It is the Holy Spirit teaching Berean Baptist Church of these things. You know, we all have the tendency to become proud, even myself, you know. That's why I told you I'll be the first one to raise my hand. If God is going to kill people who are proud and people who are complainers, I'll probably among those who will, you know, whom the Lord will take. And right now, why don't you why don't you pray? Okay. Why don't you pray right now? Kung nasan man kayo, you just bow your head right now. Just confess that sin. If you if you have done these things, God knows your heart. There is no use hiding those sins from God because God sees it. Just as he would look through a transparent glass, God sees our hearts. Every sin. that we are keeping in our hearts, nakikita ng Panginoon yan. So right now, confess that sin. If we want the Lord to bless us, especially in the in the area of missions, this is, the, this is what we need. If you have fulfilled your commitment for the past year, that is not something that we should be, that we should be proud about. We should just rejoice and thank God for it, but do not be proud. Are you proud because of your your uh, of your wealth or your abilities? Lord, we thank you for this wonderful service that you have given us, Lord, tonight. I pray, O oh Lord, na ang bawat isa na nakinig sa minsay na ito, Panginoon, will treasure this message in our heart and that we will meditate upon it. We will think about it tomorrow and the day after and be reminded that you want to prosper us, you want to bless us so that we can be a blessing to our family, we can be a blessing to others and most especially we can be a blessing to your work, to your ministry. And never enjoy these blessings. You will never give us this prosperity that you mentioned in your word if we do these things. So dear Lord, we need your grace. We need you to help us because we are weak. We fall into these sins very easily. We are prone to wonder. We are prone to go a different direction than the direction you want us to take. So, Father, I pray tonight that you will help us remember the message and keep this message in our heart. That it will serve as our guide as we, um, as we live the remaining years of our earthly life. Thank you, Lord, for using your servant tonight. And thank you for blessing us with your word. We ask and pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Were you blessed? Were you blessed?